What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the first episode of a brand new campaign. That's it. Great Britain won my faction vote. So because I'm playing this in Darth Maud under custom, I know some campaign settings the Brits already own Bengal, uh, but in custom we do not. And I've started to like choosing custom in the Darth Maud launcher because it seems to make the, the AI a bit more um, unpredictable. So let's pick world domination. This will be true world domination. So we have our territories in the British Isles. We have a couple of Caribbean islands. And we also have Rupert's land to the north. And I'm looking forward to this because the British unit roster is huge. In the base game, it's pretty significant. And it's even more so with the uh, additional units mod I'm also running. So without further ado, let's crack on and begin. So because this is... Episode one, I will be, I will, this will be an hour special. So here we are, the British Isles, some of the best territory to hold in the game, in my opinion, because it's incredibly wealthy and you have so many towns and things to grow and develop. So what I like to do is I like to knock down this church school and replace it or build a second school because London can sustain two schools fairly well. Because she is a constitutional monarchy, which means that the penalties against the lower orders, are, lower order in terms of um, public order, aren't as bad. How may I Just put Newton over in Cambridge, huh? where Cambridge can start How working may... on initially canister shot rather than plug bayonets, because we're going to be fighting some of the early battles against the uh, against the Native American factions. So let's get Edward Russell and his small fleet into Glasgow. Let's break the sloop out and they can occupy Greenwich. So our 5th rate and our 6th rate can stay in Portsmouth. Let's take John Churchill. Let's take his army. Sands. Actually, let's put a put this militia unit into the port now. But let's begin to build our... Actually, let's start to move militia to all of our ports. I'm not so bothered about having militia garrison here. Okay, let's move all of my troops to the south of England. Let's add the agent over here. Okay, so Great Britain has off the bat we can get marines because we've got an admiralty. We can also get the 33rd foot unit, which is a unique unit. So you can only recruit one of them, and this is the unit that uh, that Sh Richard Sharp fought with in India. In the TV show, Sharp. So I think, in terms of Scotland, we can recruit Highlander Warband and Clansmen, so it looks like... These guys have... The Highlander Warband do have pistols, and the Clansmen do not, and they're actually a bit worse across the board. Well, no, their melee attack is higher, but their charge is less, their morale is less, and their defence is less, so kind of makes you wonder, especially if there's only 10 gold in it, why you would ever recruit clansmen over Highlander Warband. But I'm not going to be after them just yet. Let's pick up some economic upgrades. Let's get a peasant farm. Let's upgrade. Sign workshop. Yes. And let's also set this guy. Also recruit Irish volunteers from Dublin. I'm curious to try them out to see what their firing what their firing capabilities and drills are like. And I suppose now they're, they're as good as anything we need at the moment. So let's get a, a uh, volunteer unit, uh, 33rd foot, and let's get a cavalry unit for good measure. Let's hop over to the Americas, where we can begin to occupy some of our ports with some of these forces. Sugar and coffee, what is the best resource? At the moment it is sugar, okay. Get sugar plantain built and let's get some better roads. So we do start off with the 13 colonies as our allies, but that will not uh, last too long. Uh, they will be dragged into war. I would also probably like to boost, boost my garrison here at Moose Factory. Um, but there is... So for what it, I 
whatever reason, I can't find the actual objective to assimilate the 13 colonies, but it's usually hold, capture, Savannah, capture Georgia, Cherokee Territory, and Iroquois Territory, I think. No, but it's usually a good decision to bring them into the fold as quickly as possible. We do have this force here in Nassau, who will probably want to go and capture the... Uh, the pirate islands. Now, in terms of allies, we're allied with Austria and Portugal, the United Provinces and the 13 colonies and we've got a good spectrum of nations to trade with. So let us try and trade with Prussia, one of our Protestant allies, they're not interested. Let's trade with the Ottomans because we're not at war with the Ottomans for a long... we're not going to be at war with the Ottomans for a long time. But then again they are... At, they are likely to be at war with Austria at some point. What can we trade with Denmark? Nope. Italian states are unfriendly. Persia is usually quite a good one to get hold of if you can. Nope, sadly not. Savoy, you are friendly. Nope. Venice, you are indifferent. Nope. We can try and trade with Louisiana. Nope. <laughs> they really don't like us. Italian states, nope. Denmark, we tried. Crimea may or may not exist for a long time. Well, lots of the minor nations don't want to trade with us. In which case, let's try and trade with the Marathas to try and keep them alive in their fight against the Mughal Empire. We probably may as well try and trade with the Austrians. They demand infinite military, indefinite military access. Uh, nope. Nope. I will not trade away my resources or my territories. I don't think it's anyone we haven't tried when it comes to, to trading. New Spain. <laughs> okay. Tried Savoy. Tried Venice. I think the problem is I have, I have no cash. So they want to try and ask me for money, but I don't have any money, so they're just flat out rejecting. Any trade. Okay. But well, we're going to grow our income up to about 8,000 next turn. So let's hit end turn. And this is where it all probably starts to go downhill because you'll start to see lots of wars kicking off. But what I normally do when it comes to these alliances is ignore everyone, don't get involved, and just play my own game. But this time I'd like to play it a bit thematically and try and remain allies with the people I'm allied with. Like I'd like to try and keep the Dutch and the Portuguese in the fold. Poland has attacked Austria, who is our ally, so we are going to enter the war on the side of our ally. Sweden's demanding an alliance. Who we, we're not at war with... I don't want to get dragged into a war with Russia and Sweden. That's the problem, so nope. Ah, nuts. I'm going to enter war on the side of our allies because, uh, well, Portugal is our ally. I would like to keep them. I would like to keep Portugal in the mix, and to be honest, even maybe funnel technology into Portugal to help, help them against the Spanish. Because Portugal never seems to survive in my games. They always end up getting defeated by the Spanish sooner or later. So it would be tempting to institute a bit of a policy of boosting whatever. You know, always just, just sidling and funneling technologies over to them. And there go the Barbary States, there go the pirates. I think it could, could potentially behoove us to take these ships that have no current focus and try to sell them somewhere to try and get hold of resources. So you're getting roads, upgrade roads in Jamaica. Up here to the north, upgrade roads, and let's get some more resources to the markets. Back 
to Europe. Deploy my cavalry, my infantry. There is some. Oh, it's going to take me two turns to recruit the Irish volunteers. Bring you guys down into the fold. You guys occupy the port. Yeah, I might just run these guys over to Bristol just to stop any Frenchmen from getting any ideas. Let's build another school in England. And let's probably build roads and probably build this weaver's cottage. It's probably a good idea, but I might actually spend a bit of money in Ireland. There we go. 400 cash, not a lot to do anything major. So we're at war with Poland, but we have no direct access to their territories because they are landlocked by everyone else. Let's see how that changes our trade portfolio. Well, we're at war with the Marathas because they attacked our enemy, so let's try and trade with their enemy. <laughs> They're demanding. They demand Ireland and they will give us Iceland. No, I'm not going to give away Ireland. Demanding Scotland, they're going to give me Baluchistan. No, they're ballsy. They're very ballsy. Hmm. No, so it's interesting because Rupert's land isn't too bad of a territory to give away. It is valuable and useful from an economic standpoint, because they've got lots of resources, but it is quite isolated and not very well supported, whereas Morea would get you... It would be an interesting base to have, but then again, I think it would probably just draw me into conflict with some of the Eastern Mediterranean powers, so it's just counter-offer. Just try, try send over one more time. No. Okay. That's fair enough. Let's also try and pick up... Once these guys are recruited, I'm probably going to send some of these chaps off to uh, the Americas to try and get some wins against the pirates. Might maybe join up with these forces in Nassau. Let's hit end turn. We've got our priest over starting to try and convert some of the Native American factions. The Dutch are on the march. Yeah, it's, it's very easy in Empire Total War to just ignore all of your alliances and friends. Don't have allies, just have trade partners and that's it. And then just fight the way, fight the game to only meet your interests. And it can definitely be done. But I think it's probably not the best course of action. Well, it, well, it is, well I suppose it is the best course of action. But what I mean is it's, it can get a bit repetitive. Sometimes trying to play the alliance game and makes things a bit more interesting. It gives you new objectives, so the campaign isn't as on rails. Allies? They're allied with Portugal. No, let's not go quite that far. I'm more than happy to support the Portuguese. The Huron have declared on me, so let's... Don't call my allies in, because I don't want to give them an, example, an excuse to abandon my support. My, sh my army being recruited in England may actually then go to North America to try and secure Rupert's Land and some of the northern uh, Indian or Native American territories. Barbary states are going to raid our ports. The pirates are being scoundrels. Bristol's been blockaded, but this is why you have a home fleet. I mean, it's just a light galley. I'm not interested in I'm not interested in keeping it, even if we if we capture it. So Portsmouth, we took no damage there. So Portsmouth is going to I'm going to build a war galleon to ship it over to the trade theatres. I'm not going to send the general over. Let's combine combine these troops together. Actually, no, don't don't join you. Okay, you could definitely do with just three units of line. Although, now we are getting next new roads. Let's build a new trade port in Liverpool. 
we do need three to do some upgrading in London. Let's check our research. One more turn to cast a shot. Okay. I think that's everything. Yeah, I'd like a bit more infantry. And then I send my priest forward to scout the Hurons. They do get a small garrison, and we could recruit some forward more forward position infantry. That might be a good idea. While the Irish volunteers get into position, we can start to recruit Hessian local troops. One more turn till we get canister shots. Okay, let's hit end turn. I suppose with, with Britain and the Royal Navy, what I should likely do is I need to always just keep investing something into my Navy per turn. doesn't have to be the best. Um, don't have to save up to build the maximum, the heaviest ships you can get, but just have... Just keep expanding the Navy. Gradually. Doesn't have to be huge. But getting those two universities in London, especially as they can be upgraded to modern universities late game, is huge. No, I still don't want to be allies with you, Sweden. Sooner or later we will be attacked by the, the French Empire. But hopefully they, they, hopefully they can uh, leave it a bit. Yeah, Portugal's doing some raiding. Probably not a bad idea. Especially considering as we can raid shipping in the channel quite safely. Aha! Okay, so. Plan. Uh, a. Recru recruiting those forward base troops is now going to be cancelled because we're going to lose the territory next turn. Gentleman, obviously it's the w why is he spawned in Jamaica? Okay, let's build a sloop ready to transfer him over. So what have you got? Native American bowmen, skirmishers. I mean, that's not a bad force. Let's see if our armies here. No, oh, no, they're not, they're not going to get there, because they can't get all the way over to the port. Shame. Okay, let's take... What construction have we done? We're not doing any construction. Let's stop this recruitment, because these guys will overrun this small force. Let's run them away. Okay, got one turn. Let's pick up... A turn's worth of infantry. Let's pick up a fourth rate ship of the line. Let's upgrade an iron workshop and let's also upgrade the opera house to get the extra happiness, extra turn, extra wealth per turn. Because that's pretty, pretty important early on. And let's also see. Get another militia unit. Actually. Militia are 170 to sustain. Sloops are 150. Okay, so sloops are worth building. Let's build a sloop to occupy Liverpool and we'll gradually replace our militia with sloops. Or I could fill the put the sloop here and then immediately transfer this militia over to John Churchill. Put my general up here temporarily to occupy the port. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, my squash bottle's covering my the left bit of my menu. Canister shot. Good stuff. We don't want canister shot anymore. We probably want square formation. Unfortunately, we've got some good road upgrades, which we cannot use. Fleet arrives. John Leak. Okay, let's take position on one of these ivory trade posts. Get us some income. Let's hop back to the channel. And let's put George Rook and Dumbarton Castle down here to raid. Get 
gets us a bit of extra income. Not a huge amount. Okay, let's hit end turn. France is gathering forces for an invasion somewhere, which isn't good. Yeah, Britain can be a bit of a slow burn at the start, just because there's no... You haven't got... There's no real drive to go attacking everyone off the bat. You're in a safe position. Uh, the Huron are always going to get the jump on you in the Americas, so you may as well let them. And then you can send... You can build up a, a reasonable little force. Um, hmm... To be honest, it's not too bad of an idea, really, to ally with them in retrospect. The only people they're fighting... Well, they're fighting the Marathas, which we are also. They're allied with the Portuguese, as we are. And they're also allied with Persia, our only other um, partner in the region we'd be concerned about them attacking. And they're going to give me a grant, so I think that might be a good idea. keep them in the fold. Here on a on their way. Barbary states are on they're probably gonna send even more ships to come and harass our ports. Oh no, it looks like they might be going to harass the Spanish. The pirates are also gonna harass the Spanish in the Caribbean. Okay. There we go. So this force, chiefly, this war galleon can go join the fleet already in the trade zone. This fleet under Edward Russell can come down to Portsmouth, pick up this army under John Churchill. And these chaps can move over to Waterford, then next turn they can make it to the Trade Theatre to pick up a another fourth rate. Now, Edinburgh. Let's pick a government council. Let's pick a government council in Dublin. Let's hop over to the Americas and see if we can do any... We can try and get more products to market. Great, the government buildings. These guys are going to stay where they are for now. Although, now is probably the safest it's going to be for them, especially as they're not going to be in a very good fleet. Let's take this sloop out. Oh, you chaps. A board ship. You're not going to make great distance, but you can try and get more, more up around here. If they can get up to the northeast without us not being at war with the French. That's a good idea. We can keep this sloop in Grand Bahamas. So we've got a new school, got some new roads, got a port, and we've got a trading, a trading uh, port in Liverpool. So let's probably take this militia unit and march them over here. Can't recruit any more sloops to take over guardianship of the ports. Ah, my agent didn't actually go with them. <laughs> our fleet is still going to be expanding. Okay, I need to check our uh, research. Because Oxford, you can go for empiricism early on. Let's hit end turn. Hmm, I wonder where they're going to send those guys. The Dutch are raiding the French, which is good. It looks like they've taken Brussels. I could handle a, uh, a strong a strong United Provinces in this game. To be honest, I should probably start trying to sell my technologies to Portugal. <laughs> New Spanish fleet just melted. The Marathas seem to be making good progress against the Mughals. 
in this campaign for once. Yeah, they're always going to do damage to us. We managed to kill 400 of them. They're going to demolish all our buildings, which is a bit of a bummer. Barbary States are going to be the Barbary States. and They're probably going to send the ship over somewhere and blockade one of our ports. Maybe not. Aha! Here come the pirates. So our garrison's been destroyed. The Jeffrey Butterworth is hiding to the north. So we have square formation and they've correctly selected plug bayonets as the next research for them. Okay, diplomacy. Portugal. Tech. Offer. Canister shot. And I'll give you... Uh, give me two grand. Two techs for sextant and 640. They probably haven't got too much money, but yeah, go on. So I'm, I'm okay with them being strong. In the United Provinces, again, they are fighting our enemies. Try get two grand for that. They want seasoning, interestingly, for 900. Yes, let's do that. They're fighting the French, so I'm okay with the Dutch being strong, because we are natural allies. Let's get this fourth rate to join aye, our aye, fleet. Sir. Let's get uh, Bristol, start churning out more sloops. Let's get Edward Russell over to the Americas. Port blockaded, port blockaded. Yes. Why am I recruiting militia to to garrison ports? But I've identified that as something we don't want to do. Let's get roads in Edinburgh. Let's get a conservatorium to help boost the economy. Not a lot else we can do over here. We want to upgrade in England. Let's get the Great Parliament because we've got a lot of cash that we don't really need to spend. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's pick up a another fourth rate. Actually, let's pick up a war galleon. So we lost Rupert's land temporarily. So here is more troops. Then we can hit Moose Factory, push down and hit Fort St. Marie. And we can also hit York Factory. Then have quite a established position in Canada. So let's just keep my ships nearby, just to keep an eye on them. Isaac Newton, Armchair General. He's getting better at researching military tech. Let's probably get an Ordnance Factory as well in London, just to upgrade it, just to keep our tech trees open. Ooh, Poland, Lithuania's taking Konigsberg. That is a fascinating option. Could we then march and take the city for ourselves? Let's get some infantry and some artillery and begin to explore that possibility. So this is the kind of thing I was hoping would happen when I when I decided to try and keep my alliances open because I've never normally get involved in in Europe. Konigsberg is a Protestant city, so it'd be pretty good. I mean, it's rebelling. It was going to rebel fairly soon, so I don't expect anything to happen too quickly. I mean, I won't be. I mean, what I mean is, I expect it to likely rebel towards the Prussians, unless I get over there and attack it next turn in a quite a gamble, quite a big gamble, really. Sweden's demanding alliances. Refuse. Thirteen colonies are growing in their fleets. The Louisianans are going to protect, protect and open our ports again. Look at that. Bang, 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 bang. They cleared them all out. They didn't want the pirates to succeed. I think it would be worth taking that 
my general, three militia, well, three infantry, two militia, and try and go for Königsberg, because that'd be quite fun. That would take this campaign in quite a massively different direction than I normally ever play Great Britain. Ordinarily, I'd never go... I, I focus, you focus on the Americas, build up your economy, land in Europe, land in India, you know, pick one or the other. But this would be quite different. As long as they do not rebel. So if I get you to them, you over to Greenwich. This is gonna be this is a gamble, this could go horribly wrong. I'll make no bones about it. So you've stabilized it and they've got walls, so we would be orders. We would be um besieging them. Okay, let's go send this fourth right up to go intercept that Barbary State's galley. Let's make sure we pick up uh, another fourth. Sunk them. You make make port in Glasgow for repairs. But importantly, let's do something like this, and we need to start ferrying troops over to help them out. So let's get some clansmen in. Construction report. So Opera House has been built in London. Good. Cork's got the iron workshop. Fleets have arrived. Good. Let's sail this fleet over to combine their troops. This minor fleet is going to stay on station just to keep an eye on them. Our war galleon's on position. You might go take this trade post. We're at 7,000. We're going to be losing money because of our our armies. But what I've realised, I've not done any of this. Plus one management, plus one happiness. Plus one management, plus one justice, minus one lower classes. So he's... 3 becomes 4, becomes 5, becomes 6 for justice. So this chap's... A better justice minister, although I can't. Well, cause it's not an absolute monarchy. I can't drag him around the way I'd like. Okay, so generally, what I like to do when I'm in this situation is three three stars don't do anything, so try and punt them. Good, as long as they're um, four or better, I'll take it because they're a bon they're still they're contributing something rather than merely existing. Okay, let's get a Royal Observatory to keep supplying gentlemen to our schools. One more turn to plug their nets. Okay, then let's take this sloop up to Glasgow because that fourth rate is not going to stay there forever. Let's march. Actually, I might ferry some troops from Glasgow so you might stay where you are. Okay. One of my ministers has a harsh reputation. Yeah, our ships need to sail back and forth. Actually, you might go put into Greenwich and be part of the the fleet ferrying extra extra men to Königsberg. Let's hit end turn. I would like to try and take Königsberg and then try and make peace with the Polish. I'm glad the French are at war with the Dutch and I'm not involved. I mean, that won't last forever. But if I do declare, or the French do declare on me, then what I want to do is impose a naval blockade of their coast. I don't want to actually invade their lands. <laughs> they want peace. Not yet. Not until I siege Königsberg from you. 
It's like Patras is rebelling. Patras down in near Greece is rebelling by the looks of it. Louisiana is going to keep opening our ports back open. Good. Persian ships are on the way to some of the trade theatres. Yeah, you better avoid my ships. I've got good ships on the trade theatres. On my trade spots. Although I'm probably going to slowly start expanding them with fifth rates, because at the moment that, that's quite a good balance between cost and uh, firepower. Another Barbary fleet. And another pirate fleet. Very much have to endure these pirate fleets at the moment because they're not what we're interested in. Get these men aboard ship. Let's get them over here. Ferrying men over. To be honest, I might just attack because we've got loads more men. Let's maintain the siege till these guys get into position. Ship's orders. Let's make sure we get our sloop back to England. Let's take this fourth rate and go hit the Barbary States. Galley, we don't. Do we want it? It might be useful for ferrying ships around, for ferrying troops around, but we've already got quite a significant amount of production for them if we need it. Okay, let's put Highlanders and the militia board this sloop. Get them over into the right spot. Let's get this fourth rate in port or in yeah in port. Sorry, let's upgrade the Weaver's Cottage. Let's drop a sloop up to Königsberg. You're still recruiting. Good, you need one more, really. Again, we didn't take our agent. Ignore the Grand Bahama blockade. To be honest, these men can put Moose Factory... I mean, we will fight it, but I want to bring these guys down. But what I want to do first is... A, get these sloops back to... the Grand Bahamas... Let's save... Ooh, Scottish Line Infantry. Let's get two of those. But let's take Henry de Massou. Massou. He is going to attack the city of Konigsberg. Who would have guessed that was going to be the first battle of this episode? Well, that's right. That's different. And this is from the... Yeah, yeah I can take Konigsberg and make peace. It might draw us into war with Prussia... However, we are allies with them, and I will force them to break their alliance and become Oathbreakers. I do not anticipate things going entirely my way, but they don't have enough men to stop us from every direction. And we do have plug bayonets. Make sure these guys are actually... Make sure my guys are actually doing what I want them to do. You can stay there and act as a... target. Bring our regiment of horse over. Let's spread them out. Clansmen. That's what we want. And these poor militia.
Yep, we've only got two infantry units, and they can't stop us everywhere. So we do have men with plug bayonets, so we will have the advantage. We do have to sacrifice some of our militia in a frontal assault, because we have to pin them down somewhere. I might even fix bayonets. We just ram a little plug, like a little bayonet attached to some cork down the barrel. Understandable, they waver. This is why we have men. We have men everywhere. Can you guys get over here and try and climb the wall? There we go. So the 5th Regiment of Militia have broken. The 4th Regiment are coming in to take their position. The 3rd Regiment are scaling the walls. As is the 11th Regiment of Foot. As is the 9th. Toggle plug bayonets. Escalade! You men, run. When you secure the gate, then we can push in. My cavalry can secure the square. Huzzah! stop firing for a start. Come on, clansmen. Get involved. The gatehouse is ours. In my cavalry go. In my infantry go. Yeah, there we go. So they are... Gaining a foothold. So my cavalry don't really have to do anything. They're just going to sit here and take the square. My other men are going to be the ones that try to scale the walls. These militia going after that fire lock arm citizenry unit. So they're doing okay, we're losing men, but our clansmen are getting up there. The 10th regiment are pushing in. These militia are going after this regiment of militia. They're very upset. Good stuff. We've captured another couple of gatehouses. Those men have broken, so now it's all on this regiment that's defending the wall here. Let's kill as many Polish Lithuanian troops as we can. Good stuff. So I've got a forward base in Eastern Europe, which isn't quite what I was expecting to have in this campaign, but it's still pretty neat regardless. The rest of my men on the walls also charge that last remaining unit of armed citizenry. I'm doing pretty well actually, it's surprising. They're wavering just as another mad horde of Brits are storming in. Oh, there they go. 
Excellent. So we have secured an outpost in continental Europe. Good. Major nations, Prussia. That's actually... Oh, we can't ally because they're an ally of my enemies. Wait. Prussia's allied with Hanover. And they're at war with... Oh, it's because they're at war with Austria. Well, we may find ourselves at war with Prussia. But we've... We've started to uh, box them in. So let's now go to Poland. Peace. We demand money and technology. What if I just give you the tech? What if I just give you just the tech? Good. Now they have... We have secured friendly relations with our neighbours. Let's repair our men. Let's, re let's re replenish our men, sorry. Let's get our... Ships back to... Blighty, ready to bring reinforcements because we do not actually have. We don't need an admiralty here, that's for darn sure. You guys can replenish. We've, fortunately, they are Protestant. We can probably get rid of the coaching in and replace it with an industrial building. Memo is about to grow, which would give us a port, which gives us speedier troop reinforcement, which is pretty good. Then our other engagement is up here against the Huron. So let's take this territory back from the Huron Confederacy. And now this is the sort of battle you expect to fight in a, uh, a Great Britain campaign. <laughs> Certainly not taking Konigsberg away from the Poles. I mean, we did give them that technology, which wasn't I would rather have not given them the technology, but at the same time I would rather not be at war with them. So, let's focus our line around the guns. There we go. Let's pick up these men. Let's have a look at the Irish volunteers, yeah, they look like more like militia. Despite they are say, yeah, they do say they're a regiment of foot, so they might actually have a function. Like regular line, all of our pikes. Let's put a block on the left, a block behind the guns, and a block on the right. Regiment of horse on the right, general in the centre. Send a unit of yeomanry ahead. Artillery just take position here. So I'm okay with having my cavalry just sit here and scout. Or my, or my cavalry scout for my main force before pushing up. Because what you really don't want is... close the distance too aggressively with the Huron. But we do have buckets of pikemen. If they do wish to engage in melee. Okay, they're at the back. Or at least some of them are. Also got a unit of Hessian line, so let's deploy these guys into more of a conventional formation, and let's do some scouting. This field artillery regiment can engage whoever it likes. So the left up here looks like it is secure. In which case then these men may also... 
push up. Again, with their pike block, even though some of them are stuck at the back. Aha, more of them. That's how he's focusing on their general. Push this regiment of horse forward. Ah! Charge the bowmen with our yeomanry. Let's run our infantry up. Okay, they're starting to show themselves. Okay, let's push. Sure, our general does come up as well. Run our cavalry away. Where's our other yeomanry? Bring them up. You guys definitely don't want to push up too much. You want to get to about there with your cavalry as support. But I want to focus on this front because we're a bit close. Okay. We can do some damage to their bowmen with our yeomanry again. We're engaging their line. So we do have pikemen and we also have our cavalry we can bring to bear. Okay, you've cleared out that unit of bowmen. means this front can maybe not move up quite so aggressively. Pull my cavalry back. On this flank the lines have made contact. Deploy. Deploy the cavalry. My general intercept the bowmen. Shattered. Okay, focus the broken units. Sure, they do not come back. Where are you guys? Ah, you got hit. I did not notice it in time. Push my pike up a bit closer. Okay, this flank is folded. They're both shattered. Pikemen are doing a good number on the native troops over here. My line infantry, not so much. No, no, come on, you guys. Engage the Native American tribesmen. Same with you guys. Engage the Native American tribesmen. Ah, uh, the bowmen, they got our... They got my cavalry. There we go, these tribesmen are upset. As are these Native American warriors. We route another bowman unit. They're shattered, engage the next bowman unit. These men are shattered as well, so let's begin to push our combined line through the village. Our infantry line can deploy like so. 
Our pike line can push up. They're just broken, so let's take my general over to go and engage them. Cavalry have routed to the rear. Pikemen are doing a good number. Here are rangers. Let's try pull them out. Like this. Oh no, I don't say they're gonna. My pikemen are gonna be upset. Well, the first regiment. Fix bayonets. Ah, my cavalry can go hit this bowman unit. My pikes are routed, sadly, but that's why we've got extra pikes. Yo, dog, I heard you like pikes. Ah, my dragoons bring you guys up. yeomanry is getting upset and they routed because of the friendly fire yeah, they are yeomanry yeomanry isn't good cavalry so not compared to regiment of horse focus all my artillery on the general Okay, their general has been routed. Their remaining troops in this combat are going down. There they go. And now my regiment of horse is going to chase down this unit of bowman. Bring up my dragoons. check to make sure no one's still alive who shouldn't be except for the bowmen so my dragoons are going to ride into them on the flank yes the cavalry's hit them in the flank they're wavering And they have shattered. I do I'm aware I've given a big order to a, lunch, a, a bunch of my infantry. But I'm not going to continue to battle. I'm going to end it there. And count that as a glorious victory for our forces. We lost a bunch of men. The city has been retaken. We can re rebuild our garrison. Yes. So these forces are probably strong enough to split up, send some down to Fort St. Murray, and then send some northwest up to York Factory, I think. It's probably a good idea. Let's head back to Europe, because where a lot of pretty interesting stuff's going to happen. Uh, let's not exempt this region from tax anymore. Let's claim some tax. And let's hit end turn. The French have deployed an army to the Caribbean, which isn't great. But this is why I'm I'm going to keep building up my forces in Portsmouth. So I want to make sure I do have a good amount of ships nearby. Not necessarily in giant death stacks, but still have them deployed nearby to places that are relevant. I would like the United Provinces to be... Ooh, Russia wants square formation. No, you are allied with Poland. Which I do not want to give... I don't want you to have access to give them any more tech. Uh, Sweden, no, I don't want to be... I don't want to be... Uh, I don't want to negatively impact my relations with Russia.
Oh, looks like it's New Spain trying to push someone out of their trade spot. Go on, New Spain. Go free up the Bahamas. Ah, oh, shame. Go on, Mughal Empire. You can do it. You can fight the Marathas. You're on arranging more troops. But soon, we will have quite a nice little uh, Canadian empire going in North America. Obviously, the Barbary States are going to Barbary States. It's another ship we need to take out. It might even be worthwhile deploying a squadron to... Gibraltar to help intercept those ships before they get to be such so too as much of a problem. I mean, this isn't terrible at the moment. Let's get you back to Glasgow. You're building up your. Oh, you don't even need to repair. Okay. So send this navy over to Waterford. Let's bring. The militia back to the central UK. Join this fleet back up with George Rook. This war galleon can go to the West African Trade Theatre. This fourth rate, St Albans, you may actually investigate the East Indies to try and get access to some spice income. Let's get our men yes, in the city. Let's make sure they're all replenished. I'm not so bothered about building up the uh, Admiralty building just yet. The Ordnance Factory might be a good idea to get access to 12 pounders down the line, but let's build up our economy in this region. So we are on the frontier, and we do have a potential enemy power off, the, off of our shores. The sloop up to Glasgow. Okay, let's recruit two fifth rates. Ship orders, Captain, officer, on deck. So much money do we get for this for raiding? So we're at nine nine six seven. Let's leave you guys out. Get almost nothing. So I might put this squadron of ships raiding down here. So that way they can still tr attempt to earn some extra income, but also prevent the flow of Barbary State ships out of the Caribbean. Let's hop back over to the Americas, because we've got stuff we can build. Great, the magistrates. So this army is replenishing, and you might march towards Fort St. Murray. You guys... Can replenish what you can, and you guys can start. You guys might even be able to get aboard ship. Let's see what the state of play looks like up here in York Factory. Small garrison. Lay siege to them, keep our ships nearby just in case it goes horribly wrong. We've sorted out our recruitment. Let's drop ah, some artillery. And also, let's get and make sure we do get our agent aboard for once. It would be good to have Memel grow, because then it means we can transport our, tro our troops more efficiently. So that's our agent. Did I not employ... No, I didn't. Did not embark my artillery. Oh well. We're not at war. We're not trying to siege anywhere, so it's not as important. Let's get some visibility on Vilnius. But I think, looking at the timer, it's time to end the episode. I think this has been pretty good for step one. We're at 10,000 income. Uh, we're losing, we're not getting all of the, the trade we would like. We've captured an interesting territory to start off the campaign. We, I mean, we could. It would be interesting to push and try and knock out the Poland Lithuanians, but I'm actually just interested to have a foothold in Eastern Europe. We've also got forces on the march in. North America to secure more fur trading posts. I mean, that does imply we need to rebuild this navy. This stockyard, which we do. 
Uh, but let's check. Okay, Cambridge don't get carbines. Get ring bayonets. Oxford go for physiocracy. And then next turn, I'd probably be looking to upgrade some of our schools. But as I said, looking at the looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for the continuing adventures of Great Britain. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>